My name is Jason Wright, and I am a major in the United States Army Reserve. I had a variety of roles, from serving initially as a legal assistance attorney to soldiers to advising commanders on the laws of war. My most recent assignment was to represent detainees before the military commissions in Guantanamo Bay. I was assigned to represent Obaidullah, uh, an Afghan villager who has now been in Guantanamo Bay for 12 years without trial. And I was also assigned to represent Mr. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the lead defendant in the 9-11 case. The problem with the military commissions in the Guantanamo Bay is that it was built on the original sin, the original sin of torture. Imagine that, that you were captured in, in a foreign country, you were abused, maybe you were physically assaulted, subject to psychological abuse. You were held without access to lawyers, without access to family members. You were disappeared. And then this foreign government says, well, now we're going to try you for crimes. So you're going to have a trial in a completely new court system based on secret evidence. But don't worry, we're going to give you a lawyer and they give you a lawyer that's wearing the same uniform of the country that just abused you, the country that just violated your human rights, that violated your, your fundamental right to human dignity. Now, if this situation played out for an American citizen in any country in the world, it, we, we would be outraged. March 2003, Mr. Muhammad was captured. He was sent to what we now know as black sites. And during this period of three and a half years when he was detained by the CIA, the U.S. government applied techniques that before 9-11 had not been used by the U.S. government. Techniques that the U.S. government prosecuted war criminals for. One of those techniques was waterboarding. A waterboard is a mock execution. The person who's being victimized by it is literally brought to the edge of death. Mr. Muhammad, in one month alone, was subject to the waterboard 183 times. Mr. Muhammad was also sub subjected to 180 hours of sleep deprivation. And there were also threats to kill his, his family as well. But those are just a few of the techniques that have been declassified. The interrogation was torture. President Obama has called waterboarding torture. Senator John McCain himself, a victim of war crimes, he calls it torture as well. What the U.S. government has done, at least in pursuit of the war on terror, has not only affected the attempted relationships between an attorney and a client, but it affects the fundamental essence of the rule of law. We're supposed to build a relationship with our clients in a death penalty case. And we say, trust us, uh, we can talk confidentially, but then we discover that there's audio listening devices on the ceiling. Trust us, our conversations at a council table are protected. No one can listen into those. But then we discuss that the microphones are, are pushed push to, to mute, not pushed to talk. Uh, trust us, what we, what we write to each other back and forth is confidential. You can keep that in your legal bin in your cell, and the government will not search that. Well, we lied there. We have a rich tradition in our country of, of respecting the rule of law, the right to a fair trial, the right to effective assistance of counsel, the right to due process. This military commission process has been designed to ensure that no information about the treatment that these men suffered from, that it never reaches the light of day. I still can't speak about anything that happened to him while he was in the custody of the CIA. Dates, locations, names, techniques. This is about protecting what was done to him. In other words, about protecting the CIA. It's about hiding war crimes. I said, no, it's unethical for me to do this. It's unethical for me to voluntarily abandon a capitally charged client. Now I'm, I'm no longer Major Wright. Uh, I'm Mr. Wright, and I've, my nine years of service have concluded with the Army. It, uh, it's, it's upsetting that this is what we're calling a justice system. 
Now, I, I, uh, I made a principled stand and I'm willing to accept the consequences of that. Clearly, I did. You can always lose your job, or you should never lose your integrity. And that's what I thought was important, to represent what the rule of law respects. You're defending the person responsible, allegedly, for planning attacks on the World Trade Center. What do you say to people who would say, how can you do that? This guy is the embodiment of evil. Who cares? How we treat people in, in, in our justice system is a reflection of who we are as Americans. And I believe America is a great country. And that, that we are a country of laws and not men. It's not about the person we represent. It's about who we want to be. The 9-11 case is a reflection, in a sense, of our, of our own humanity. It's a tragic day for America. What the U.S. government has done in response as well, this war on terror and, and uh, operating on the dark side uh, of the war on terror, and as, as Vice President Cheney said, taking the gloves off, if you will. That's been a dark, dark period and a dark history for us. The Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr., once said that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only the light can do that. And I think by shedding light on, on what happened, I think America can reclaim that, that moral high ground again. When we talk to other countries about human rights standards, we can practice what we preach. But we need to have a period of rediscovery and redemption. We need to have a public debate about it. And, and that begins by just shedding some light on the darkness.